I signed up immediately after high school. And for me, uh, the Canadian Armed Forces was uh, my career path. Uh, I had been involved in Army Cadets for the past six years at that point uh, and had excelled at Army Cadets. So when I joined the military, it was with the full intention of, of the military being my career. So I had been in for uh, just over a year and had finished my trades training, had been posted to the HMCS Saskatchewan, and had been on ship for about four months at that point. When I came back from my, uh, my holiday over the New Year's uh, was the first indication I had that something was, was happening. I had three individuals come up to me separately uh, and each told me that they had been pulled in for questioning with the Special Investigation Unit. Uh, and the questioning was all about me, my loyalty to the country, uh, how well they knew me, uh, and a number of questions. All three of them were also told not to reveal to me that, uh, that they had been questioned and didn't know that each other had been questioned. Uh, so that was the first, first time that I knew that there was some investigation happening. I knew that I was gay, uh, however, I uh, was still in the closet. I had not come to terms with the fact that I was gay. Uh, I wasn't acting uh, on, on uh, you know, I wasn't seeing anybody or, uh, you know, in fact, I was, I was sort of hoping to have kind of a straight life and thinking that, you know, the military and, and you know, maybe I could end up getting married and, and being gay would never be a factor. Uh, I was so in the closet at the point uh, that, um, uh, you know, I was, I was just scared to death of, of being gay or, or people knowing that I was gay. What happened next was the uh, Special Investigation Unit of the Military Police showed up at the HMC of Saskatchewan. Uh, I was called over the ship's broadcast system and, and told to report. Uh, I showed up and there were two men in civilian clothes who informed me that I was to go with them uh, immediately. Uh, and I was escorted onto the dock and into a light blue K car where I was driven to the military police headquarters for, uh, for questioning. The initial investigation, the initial questioning, uh, I recall it took hours. Uh, and um, uh, toward the end, they said, well, we can clear this up. We want to make sure that what you're telling us is the truth. So we want you to take a polygraph exam. And it wasn't really until they started preparing me for the polygraph exam that the question of my sexuality came up. And one of the questions, uh, again, it was, it was probably you know, 30 or 40 questions that they had for me on the polygraph. When they were, before they hooked me up to the machine, they went through a dry run of the questions uh, and one of the questions was, are you gay? Uh, and with a polygraph, you can only answer yes or no. To me, it was the government of Canada was asking me if I was gay and to disclose whether or not I was gay and they were going to do so on a polygraph. Uh, and for a person who had not even come to terms with my own sexuality, it was the most frightening thing in the world to me at the time. Then it wasn't for another three days that I was called in uh, for, the, uh, for the polygraph exam. And it was at that time that in the pre-questions that I broke down and when they asked me if I was gay, I said, yes. Uh, and uh, it, it was almost like they closed their book, uh, that that was what they were waiting for me to tell them. It was a few weeks later that they came back saying, based on what we've got, we have more questions. Uh, one of the things that they, had, that they had seized was a photograph and it was a photograph of me and I believe three other uh, uh, crew members and we were posing uh, in our workspace. And uh, uh, they asked me if I had the negative for the photo and I said, no, I don't. And um, they made me search for the negative. Uh, in the very background of the photograph, there was a radio frequency written on the wall. And they said, because that radio frequency was on the wall, that, uh, that that was classified information and they were going to take away my security clearance. Um, they then gave me the option that uh, you're, you're going to lose your security clearance. You won't be able to work on the ship. Uh, you're gonna spend the next six months of your term uh, probably sweeping the streets, doing general duties. Um, you will not be able to continue on in your current job uh, or, we can give you an honorable discharge and you can go your way now.
you know, again, at the time I was, I was very isolated. I, uh, um, uh, I wasn't able to talk to my family, my friends. Uh, I still wasn't out to anyone other than the government of Canada uh, and, you know, a couple strangers in a room. Um, I wasn't prepared to come out either. Uh, so I, I was feeling defeated. Uh, the military had been my career option. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had also felt that I had let down my country, uh, that, um, uh, that it was my fault, that, um, uh, that I was being released, that it was something that I had done wrong uh, in, in just being gay. And that, uh, you know, I, I um, felt both ashamed uh, as well as uh, kind of lost at the time. I often reflect on uh, the individuals who made it possible for me to take a, a role uh, as, uh, uh, you know, as one of the lead plaintiffs. And that um, for all that we've achieved with the, uh, uh, with the class action lawsuit and with the apology, that I am constantly reminded of the individuals who came before us who made it possible that uh, there, there are so many people uh, within the uh, 2S LGBTQ uh, plus community who uh, have really um, created a pathway that it is only possible for us to enjoy um, uh, kind of the apology and the, and the, um, uh, the acknowledgement of, of what happened in the military because of those individuals who fought so hard in the past and who were, who were so brave in the past. And as well, I would, I would count all of the other uh, people who were in the military, who were in the civil service and, and in the ARCMP and what they endured and, and just the strength of, of all of these individuals uh, who, uh, uh, who faced a horrible time, um, but were able to, uh, um, gain from it and, and, uh, and remain strong.